Well, what is going on YouTube? Welcome back to A Therapeutic Edge. Now, today on the table in front of us, we have something that I have wanted for a very long time, but um, never managed to get my hands on one, and now I have changed that. This, of course, is the Spyderco Shaman. Uh, now, I know some people say it shaman, some people say it shaman, I say it correctly, I say it shaman, I'm just saying, <laughs> you can say it any way you want, but um, the word is shaman. Anyway, uh, so there we go, it is the Spyderco Shaman, at least coming out of my mouth, You again, any way you want. Uh, this one is a sprint run from a while back, this is S90V and carbon fiber. Now, they keep making sprint runs of these uh, in a lot of heavy-duty tool steels, and that's great, except I don't like uh, knives that aren't stainless. Uh, I have only a couple. I've got a Rex 45 Spider Co. and uh, a couple of uh, 3V knives, but uh, quite frankly, I, for the same reason I don't really love D2 anymore, I don't like a knife blade that I have to spend a lot of time doing maintenance on, and so this one in S90V makes me exceptionally happy. So, what do you get? Well, you get a big knife. This is a lot of knife, no matter how you hold it, and I love that. Um, I actually got this one from the designer of the Amalgam. Uh, Brian Lai was nice enough to part with it. He had had it in his collection for a while. He knew I was looking, and uh, so we uh, made that happen. <laughs> I am stupid happy about it. Uh, MXG uh, Clips, MXG Gear, does make a deep carry clip for this knife. Unfortunately, they are sold out. As soon as they put those back in stock, I will get one and complete this knife's journey into my collection. Um, so this is a big chunk of knife. It is part of the Native series uh, from Spyderco. Uh, you can tell by the blade shape. Um... I love this thing. It is a joy to carry. It is comfortable in hand. The action, it's a little stiff, but um, by comparison to many, it is very, very smooth. Um, this beautiful choil up front allows you to choke up on the knife for, for any kind of work that you want to do. I've cut up some cardboard with it. This S90V is ground very, very thin and slicey. Um, and I'm glad because I don't want to have to sharpen S90V. <laughs> it is a pain in the butt to sharpen. Uh, so let's take a look at some specs. Just while we're doing this thing that we do. We line that up right there. You get one, two, three, and an eighth inches of cutting on one, two, three. A little over three and a half inches of S90V. The grip area, and we're going to do this in two ways. We're going to do it just on the handle proper. From just behind the swell, you get one, two, three just under four inches of grip, but if you move forward to that choil, which you're gonna do, you get one, two, three, four, almost five inches of grip. It is really, really well done. These carbon fiber scales are milled in such a way that there are no sharp edges. It is exceptionally comfortable in hand. I know I've said that a few times already, but um, I'm not kidding. This is one of those knives where even at 202 or you know for the standard S30V model or 250 260 bucks for the sprint runs all I can say is this if you're thinking about getting one get one it will not disappoint uh, I have been incredibly happy to have this thing uh, the overall knife if we line that up in length is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and a quarter inches long it is a very nice size. It is just at a half inch uh, through the body, which means it uh, fills the pocket well, but it's not enormous. It is uh, tall, so closed. It does take up a fair amount of pocket. Let's flip it over so it lays flat. I know what I'm doing. Watch me go. Yeah, it's um, an inch, a little over an inch and a half, inch and three, almost an inch and... Uh, three quarters. So it's uh, it's a thick boy, tall at least, so it takes up a fair amount of real estate. Um, it's running on washers and uh, it is running on them very, very nicely. I actually took this thing apart 
and the build inside is beautiful. The uh, liners are knocked down, there's no sharp edges. Uh, it is just really, really well done. Let's weigh this thing, just for fun. Now, uh, this does not profess to be a lightweight knife. It should never be considered a lightweight knife. Um, but, let's see where we land anyway. Yeah, we're at just about five ounces, 4.9 ounces. Uh, it, it is, it's a hefty piece. Uh, it leans into heavier use. I hesitate to say hard use, because um, that has some very specific meanings for people. But uh, this is a heavy use knife. If you're gonna do a ton of cutting and a lot of it on a regular basis, the way this thing is built to feel in hand is ideal for that. And of course, with this beautiful Spyderco leaf shaped blade, it's great for draw cuts. It has just enough belly for fine work. Um, it's not fantastic in the kitchen, unfortunately, because of this nub right here. You see that? That means that that nub, yeah, it interferes. Well, here I'll show you. If you put it flat, you can hear it. It rocks on that nub just a little bit. Now, I've seen people actually knock this off, uh, which would be just fine, and then it would absolutely work in the kitchen because of the shape of that blade. And because this is S90V, it wouldn't rust or, you know, look icky after using it in such an environment. The new uh, tool steel models you're going to probably not want to use in the kitchen because they will pick up rust. They are not stainless, but this is. Let's go ahead and get the other specs out of the way. Let's get an accurate reading on how thick the body is. See, we are over a half inch, as I said. The blade itself, I am gonna need some new calipers. These are starting to get a little wonky. It is a nice thick chunk of S90V. Uh, we're coming in at just a little over three and a half millimeters. Man, the lighting is not good today. There we go, three and a half millimeters, 3.69 millimeters to be exact. That is a nice hefty chunk of S90V. You know, it's weird when you chase a knife because you're never sure. Now I've held these at shows and stuff and so I knew that I enjoyed the shape. But even with that, you build a knife up in your head and uh, there's always a risk when you bring it home that it's not gonna live up to your expectation. That's not the case with this particular shape. And frankly, I think that any version of this that you get, the standard S30, uh, the standard, uh, the, the newer sprint runs, if you get the micarta, if you get the carbon fiber, if you were to get just the straight G10, I don't think that this knife would let you down regardless of which one you brought home. And I think that is very, very cool. I really do. So let's do our size comparisons. Here it is against the bug out, and as you can see, it is considerably larger than the bug out, but of course most things are. Here it is up against the Rat Model 1, and again, is not bigger than the Rat 1. Uh, excuse me, it is, excuse me, it is smaller than the Rat 1. Man, I know how to talk. It's been a long day. I am, of course, as we all are, stuck at home, and that makes things weird. Um, you get a uh, half inch more knife uh, out of the Rat 1, but it is, despite its weight, the uh, Shaman here, a really nice carry, and I know I've said that. What else can we compare it against? Here it is against the TRM Atom. This one happens to be women carry knives. Now the Atom and the uh, Shaman are not that dissimilar. Uh, both are in really excellent steels, at least in this case, but of course, the Atom is much, much thinner through the handle. Such a good knife. <laughs> oh, since I already showed it, here it is up against the Spyderco Amalgam. Now, this is what I love about Spyderco, these two knives right here. They're not afraid to do things that are a little different. Both of these knives are exceptionally good users, exceptionally good cutters, but they are not afraid to bring those things to us in completely different packages. I really, you know, uh, in, a, in a previous video, I said that I don't enjoy a lot of Spyderco's work, and, and it's kind of true. I don't have a Para 3, and I don't have... Uh, a police and I don't have a you know I don't have a lot of the sort of traditional Spydercos primarily because 
I don't just work with my knives, I collect them. And as that's the case, I tend to like knives that are a little more interesting in appearance. It doesn't mean that Spyderco knives from all the way from the little dragonfly all the way up aren't excellent workers. They are. But from a style perspective, I don't lean into a ton of their work. But these two, God. In fact, these two and the smock are actually three of my favorite knives in the world. They happen to be made by Spyderco. And it's because they are so unique and so interesting. Um, I just think that's great. I really do. Uh, there is a full... I've done a review of this. Um, but now that I've owned one for a while, I'm actually going to do a long-term review of this coming up here pretty quick. So keep your eyes open for that. Anyway, this is the Spyderco Shaman. This is an excellent <laughs> flippin' pocket knife. Uh, it is just stellar. It really is. I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at it with me. I know uh, I very much enjoy having it in the collection. The compression lock on this thing is excellent. It really is. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about the Shaman or the Amalgam or the Atom, feel free to ask down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I would love to have you here on a regular basis. I guess that's about it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.